towards the end of my pitching career that I was going to be a coach. No doubt in my mind. They're in need of a magical mountain visit. Let's see what Paul Menhart has up his sleeve here. Game plan executed to perfection. Kurt Suzuki wanted the third pitch right where it was, and then he said the fourth pitch I want even higher. Hunter Strickland, after a mound visit from Paul Benhart, <laughs> it's a big strikeout with the bases loaded, nobody out. You played professional baseball and played parts of 10 years in the minor leagues. Why choose to go down that road again in terms of all the travel, all the time away from your family, nights in random hotel rooms. Some guys, when they're done playing, they don't want to experience that life anymore. You opted back in. Why? The grind is something that I don't put too much stock in because I love, absolutely love watching kids get better. Like, that's what fuels me. A kid making his major league debut is the icing on the cake. Did you harbor hopes at that time that you would be sitting where you are now as a major league pitching coach in a major league bullpen? I told Bob Boone and, and the powers that be at the time that I would stay at that level, and I thought it would be neat for them to have to get through me to get ready for the next level. And that was something that I never really thought of advancing. And the years went by, and, and guys were getting better. I guess I was getting better. Uh, the kids taught me just as much as I was teaching them. And Doug Harris, who took over as the farm director, progressed me along, along with Spin Williams, who was a huge mentor of mine throughout this whole process. I still, uh, and I got in trouble for saying this, at one time I, I looked at the big league job as being like more of a retirement job, you know? Because you have to work so hard down in the, in the minor leagues to get those kids better on a daily basis. And now that, now that I'm here, I'm finding out it's, you got to do the same thing. These guys still need instruction. They need love and yeah. they need attention. Over the course of your 13 years in the minor leagues with the Nationals organization, you worked your way up from Savannah to Hagerstown, Potomac, Harrisburg, Syracuse. With each of those steps, is your thought process changing in terms of your future, in terms of what might lie ahead of you? I didn't let the level dictate how I did. I, I, I would give a little bit more truth to the guys the, the higher up I got. Mm. I didn't start thinking about becoming a, a big league pitching coach until you hear little things said from some pretty powerful people that, you know, when you're a big league pitching coach, and that was when I was a coordinator. So um, it became a goal then that eventually it would happen when it was the right time. And I guess right now is the right time. When you heard those comments then, did it shock you? I still thought it was uh, a long shot, to be honest, because it's, it's the big leagues. But I loved being a coordinator. I loved trying to influence both the coaches and the hundreds of pitchers that come through the organization. And now to be here with 13, 14, you know, you know revolving doors, so to speak, sometimes, and meeting new guys, it's, it's, a, it's a daily challenge. And, and I, I look forward to coming to work every day. You talk about the positives that you experienced while coaching throughout the minor league ranks. It was something that was clearly a passion of yours, but I'm sure there were low points as well. And did you at all question whether this was truly the right path for you? I, I never questioned the path. It was, it was a, it's a great job. It's something that I love, love doing. As I told you before, I, I, I love watching kids get better. Yeah. And for them to get promoted to the next level was wasn't, oh no, we're gonna stink now because we're losing one of our best pitchers. It wasn't like that. It was about getting them ready for the next level. Yeah. And and then, the as I said, the, the icing on the cake was to just watch a kid make his major league debut. And that text and that phone call, it's, it, it's, it's, there's no better feeling. And then a few months ago, you get a phone call from Doug <laughs> Harris. You're out walking your dog, and Doug Harris, who you've known for many years, tells you that he wanted you to be the new Washington Nationals pitching coach. Yeah. I told what? him I told him to not be screwing around with me right now because it's not the time. Because yeah. I, was, I was getting ready to go fly to Florida. And he goes, I'm serious as a heart attack. You're going to Philly to meet up with the big league club. You're going to be a big league pitching coach. And I just, whoa, flooring. What are the emotions in that moment? And then what are the emotions when you walk inside and you tell your wife, Bitsy, that, that, that this is the new role for you? It took me uh, uh, a good 20 seconds when I walked in the door because I was holding back some, some tears of, of wow 
for lack of a better term. And she was more concerned that maybe something happened to the dog. <laughs> and of course, my beautiful Australian Shepherd Husky mix, Gracie, was fine. And she's like, what's wrong? What's going on? I go, and I, it just came out. I said, I just got the call from Doug that I'm going to be the big league pitching coach. And she just started bawling. It was great. And what have these few months been like for you? Well, I'm going to tell you this. And uh, this is fairly candid, and, and I hope I don't get too emotional, but I lost both my mom and dad, not this past spring training, but uh, March of the uh, previous spring training, uh, 20 days apart. Oh, wow. And what has happened is I've got three brothers and three sisters, and it has brought us all so much closer. This opportunity, they are huge Nats fans. They, there's a text thread that goes on. I've got 40 to 100 after every game that I read. They are watching almost every pitch. They are so excited. It's brought us so much closer. They've come to visit, most of them so far. And, and I know it's my mom and dad. They had, they had a lot to do with this, without a doubt.